Hello friends, welcome to my channel. Today we will be discussing Adobe Experience Manager. So all the important questions and answers that are generally asked in the interview. So how, to, what is AM? What is the use of AM? How AM is used? And again, all the different components of AM. So there are two different types. Again, if you are going for an only content authoring uh, jobs, so you should be familiar with all the different uh, steps, all the different uh, components, the way AM works. So that is important. And again, if you are going for a component level or developer level, so the questions will be different. So today we will be uh, discussing about the whenever you are going for an interview for the author level. So at that time, uh, familiarity with the environment is very important. So first of all, AEM is a content management tool. So using AEM, you can create website, you can create mobile apps, you can create forms. So all those things you can <coughs> easily create using a uh, drag and drop. Now, AEM is the preferred CMS that being that is being used in big organization the way it is managed the way data is being managed and we have workflows then if you talk about the asset management so we have a dedicatedly uh, digital asset management where we store all the pdf files we can store images we can store videos then we can create workflows that will take care of approval process so all those managed things uh, we can do using AEM. We have other uh, content management tool also like WordPress, Joomla. But the problem is like, again, at in terms of scalability, in terms of storage, since these are open source, so they are not preferred in big organization. Plus, again, if there is a lot of data, so in that case, like we have JCR, Java Content Repository that is being used. Next, the very important thing is like, what is AEM dispatcher? So when I talk about performance, when we talk about optimization, so AEM automatically provides this dispatcher. So dispatcher is basically, it works like a load balancer. So load balancer means which balance the load. So there will be one author, there will be several publishers. So ultimately, whatever the frequently accessed pages are there, those are stored on the dispatcher. So again, in, in terms of caching, all the frequently accessed pages, they are stored on dispatcher again. And also the load balancing, if there is load on a particular publisher, so it will be read, it will be again transferred to another publisher. So it is not a dedicated load balancer, but dispatcher plays a very important role in terms of caching. So whenever a dispatcher, so this dispatcher question is every time asked because again, you should know what is AEM, what is the purpose of AEM, you have created the pages, you have done, you have published the pages. Now the next part is like how AEM manages the performance of the website. So for that, this is the AEM dispatcher that is basically used. Then if we talk about normally asked is package and bundle and whatever we are talking, it is at, at the level of author. So they should know what is the package, what is the bundle. So again, you should know that bundles are basically jar files. Those are installed and those are simple modules. Again, different, different bundles, how bundles are communicating with other bundles. So that is uh, basically for bundles. So those are again, Java based coding converted into jar files and then they are installed. If we talk about package, so again, package, it is automatically provided by AIM where if you want to import certain functionalities again your content your module from one aem instance to another aem instance you can generally use this package option to transfer the files so main feature of aem you know it's a content uh, management tool you can create website of in different languages you can manage different different pages you can manage workflows you can have different integration with other uh, third party, like you can integrate with analytics and everything. Now we have one another thing again that all the author, they should know that is the dialogue. So dialogue, 
Simple dialogue and design dialogue, this plays a very important role in AEM. All the input, whatever authoring that you are going to do in AEM, that is basically based upon the dialogue. So, if you want to uh, create a page on which we have to configure the form, in which we have to configure the hero banner, in which we have to configure the carousel, all the things that you are going input to that particular page, it all depends upon the dialogue. So dialogue provides you a user interface where you can input all those details. If I talk about a carousel, so it will be the list of images. You can put cards and within those cards, uh, we can put the images. So again, the structure of component, how the component is built, that all depends how once it was started once the developer started working what was the business requirement but for authoring purpose you should know that the dialogues plays a very important role because every input for the page how the page is to be set up how the page information needs to be done so that is being done using dialogue now the other thing is template so what are templates so all the pages on which you are going to work the new pages you are going to create the starting point is template so it gives a fixed structure it gives you the placeholders where you can put all your components it makes sure that nothing is broken so for ev for every template there is a strict rule there is a rule based template that what all components can be put so while doing the authoring part if some component doesn't fit those components are not allowed. So it makes the style, the way the, that particular page or that particular template is being shown on different, different language, it is fixed. So template plays a very important role. Any page that you want to create, you have to select a template. And for template, there are policies. So based upon those policies, you can place only those uh, components that are being, that can be implemented that can be put on that particular template then uh, what is sightly so again it is not up to that level for uh, authors but again the front end language again you should know that in every programming language we have this mvc structure model view and container so we have sling model if you talk about the view view is the part where you are uh, working where you are putting the input on the template you are creating the pages so that comes on view and the language that is being used is Cycli. so Cycli is again it is not a programming language it is again a front-end language again you can do all those a uh, condition base also but again it is a html part in which it is extended and you can also put some condition that okay if this condition is true then this particular uh, block should be shown if this condition is false then this particular block should be shown so basically these are the important uh, questions that are being asked and apart from this you should also also be aware three things again there is a repository because whatever content images svg images your pdf they are being stored and they are being stored on the content repository that is called JCR Java content repository. So you should be aware front end is your portion where you will be working. So that is the <coughs> dialogue part. That is a template part. You log in into the back end and you uh, select a site, you select a page and then you click on create page. And then once the page is being created, you are asked for a template. There may be number of template as I told you that template basically is set up based upon the structure of the website if you have a website in which you have a listing page home page product page so whatever product page you will be creating you will be selecting the product page template whatever listing page you will be creating you will be selecting the listing page template so friends this is all about uh, am basic knowledge whenever you are going for a authoring part there are also content fragment also there are experience fragment also so the experience fragment basically is used for 
reusable component if you have a header if you have a footer you know that those header and footers are being used are going to be used on, uh, all over the site you can create that so we'll be discussing some more questions in the coming videos so this was all about uh, basics of aem at author level if you like this video please like share and subscribe and thank you for watching this video